Hey, Terry, I appreciate what you do in a big way. Terry, I owe you. Sam, you're messing with my chargers. When Terry plugs in, he's golden. Kids pour in here wanting what he has. They buy belly pants with cash. What did Terry say? You don't want to know. What did Terry say? He said stick to vlogging. Stick to vlogging? Yes. And what did you say to Terry? What do you think I said? I told him good zero videos are hard to find. Hey. Relax. I need 2.5. Supercharger 2.5. What? No. My bike topped out at 1.3 kilowatts today. Amateurs don't use belly pans. Sam, I've seen the way you charge. You've got three phase. You'll trip every breaker from here to China. I need one of these. 3.3 kilowatts. Actually, you know, let's make it 10. And Brandon, I need him by tonight. Here it is, in all its glory, the DigiNow charger pan. So uh, it's really heavy, actually. So let's get it on the scales and compare it to the original pan. All right, just over three kilos for the new pan. The original was just made out of plastic. So yeah, it's way lighter. But I have a feeling the new chargers would just melt this thing. The DigiNow pan is a lot deeper too because the superchargers are taller. There's a difference of about two centimeters. All right, so for people who order this pan from now on, uh, all the chargers and stuff are gonna be mounted already and they're all wired up, so it's all perfect. But since I ordered the chargers like a year ago, uh, my chargers are unmodified. So I still have the Sumitomos and I still have a, a fan wire coming out the bottom. Um, and so this, like this is the part that all the heat disperses out of. And so this is supposed to sit flat, flush with the bottom of the pan so that all the heat kind of like spreads out uh, because this is really thick and uh, it works as a heat sink. And so this fan sticking out the bottom is a problem. So one way to do this is to get a grinder and cut a groove to lay the fan cable in. I didn't really want to do that and figured spacers would be a better alternative. So the mad scientist Patrick made these. They raise the chargers above the fan cables, but still work as heat sinks. The only problem was that the bottom of the battery has these fins that stick down right where the chargers go. We needed to use even more spacers on the sides, and I just decided I'd rather not lose more ground clearance than I already did, and I should just cut up the chargers. I like cutting stuff anyway. So I made those fan cable grooves and put on some thermal paste, or heat sink compounds, which helps transfer heat between the chargers and the pan. It's a pretty tight fit, but everything lined up perfectly. The design of this pan was really well done. So good job, Dr. Bass. The front two chargers face the same way, and then the third charger is flipped around so that the cables go out the back. Patrick had some ideas for how to simplify the wiring, so he started hacking stuff up. Absolutely do not do this unless you're a qualified electrical engineer. We're only customizing stuff to work better with New Zealand's unique charging infrastructure. As a responsible YouTube video uploader, I need to advise not modifying your charging setup in any way. Just bolt some inlets to your bike. Look at me here, feeling productive, not lighting anything on fire. Be like Sam. And then this is that cable that Patrick modified. So this is the aux connector that you plug in above the motor. Um, this is the uh, brain box communication. And then these split off into two of the DC connectors for the chargers. So this lines up with these two. Um, he spliced them in offset so they line up perfectly. And then you can tuck them in and it'll look all neat and tidy. Like this. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So the benefit of having two of these hooked up to the aux port is that you could just unplug this and plug it into another bike if they don't have aftermarket chargers or you know, you just wanna help them out, buddy charge. No zeros left behind. And then they would get to see what charging at 6.6 .6 kilowatts is like, which would probably make them want to buy their own chargers. And then you'd have a new road trip, buddy. All right, next up, we have to route the other side. So uh, find all the fan cables and just hide them really deep down because there isn't really a place in this pan for fans. Um, unless 
you have these little tiny ones, you could possibly mount them in here somewhere. They just barely fit. Okay, one of them fits. Um, maybe another one? So there you go. Two little fans. Just make sure these fans are waterproof because these ones are not. So I have the AC on the right of the pan going to the Nutrik inlets, each one wired up individually so I can have access to each charger and connect as many as I want. And then on the left side of the pan I have the DC cables. So one of them goes up to the controller and then two go to the aux cable. And then I'll put the brain box up here in this space under the seat. So once all the cables are routed, it'll look like this. But to cover up all these cables, and for symmetry's sake, I made another carbon fiber panel for this side. You can never have too much carbon fiber. The pan was already on when I was routing all these cables, but I wanted to show how I got it on. It is really heavy. About twice as heavy as the stock charger, but it's eight times as powerful. So here it is, all installed. I think it looks super clean. I mean, not the bike. The bike is dirty, but the install is clean. The whole setup looks a lot cleaner than before, is what I'm saying. Anyway, to sum up, the stock charger is lighter and smaller, but it takes about 9 hours to charge the bike, and that's just ridiculous. The pan from DigiNow is heavier, and you lose about 2 centimeters of ground clearance, but cuts the charging time down to an hour. So I feel like that alone is worth the extra 8 kilos. But wait! There's more! That's so cool. So right now I'm just using one charger, just plugged into the wall. Uh, but if I have one of those home chargers that's like seven kilowatts, I could plug in two. Uh, or if I'm out on the road, I could plug in all three and get like 10 kilowatts. Now that I can charge super fast, it's time to see how much further I can ride. So it's time for a road trip and more Fast and the Furious parodies. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.